Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Isn't it a great day to be in the house of the Lord? So thankful to be here in his house this morning. Why don't we stand and usher in his presence? Because we serve a great God. And I'm so thankful that he has blessed me, but not only me, my family, not only my family, but my church. And uh, I want to give him praise, glory, and honor this morning, for he is good. And why don't we give him some praise this morning? Why don't we lift our hands and lift up a praise to the God who's mighty, who's able, and who's willing to do everything that we ask of him. Why don't we go right to him in prayer? Lord Jesus, we ask, Lord God, that your presence would just be in this place. Let your anointing flow, that we may feel like we've never worshipped you before. Let us come in thankful this morning for all the provisions that you have provided, everything that you have done. And I want to give you praise this morning for you are worthy and you are great and greatly to be praised. And we come to worship you this morning in your most matchless name of Jesus. And the church said amen. Why don't we give them a hand clap of praise this morning.
grateful that he is a great that never ceases to amaze me and no matter what situation I'm going through he is the I am he is the God that can give exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think in the midst when we don't think it can even be possible because he is the I am and I want to worship him this morning because he is so great he is so great
for who he is. He is the I am. He is Jehovah Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how I'm feeling, but right now, Jesus, oh, you lived and you died for me. Oh, I'm so thankful this morning. Why don't we give him another hand clap of praise? He's so worthy, so worthy, so worthy. And he is fighting every battle for us. And I don't think there's a better time to relate to that like right now. I just feel so emotionally overwhelmed at times. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys do too. But what I've learned is there's also a time to sometimes sit back and let God do the work. Because sometimes you th we have to we think we have to do all this to help and provide and you know support, which yes, there are times for that. But sometimes there are situations out of our control that we just have to say, God, it's all in your hands. God, you're fighting this battle for us. If who can be... <laughs> but in the name of Jesus, things will be done. And I am ready to worship that name, for he is great. on our side he has overcome yes he has overcome we will not be shaken we will not be moved jesus you are here he's carrying our burdens covering our shame he has overcome yes he has overcome we will not I will live, I will not die The resurrection power of Christ alive in me And I am free in Jesus' name And I will live, I will not die I will
possible, why don't we clap our hands unto the one who is able this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. What a promise that we will live and not die. What a promise we have in Jesus. So thankful for that this morning. We want to go before him in prayer. If you're able to stand, we ask that you would do so at this time. Please remember Sister Blackford. I believe her knee surgery was pushed back for some other medical reasons. So we want the Lord to touch her and be able to get her knee fixed for her. I know she's in a lot of pain also. Sister Kim Lease needs a healing. Every special unspoken this morning. So many needs across this place. But we know that God is able. Let's go before him. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity today to be in your presence. Oh, we're thankful that you're able. We're thankful to know that you still heal. I pray right now, God, whatever the situation is, whatever the need is, that you would move and that you would minister, God. We may not know the details, but you know the details. Lord, I pray that we would put our hope and our confidence, our trust in you this morning, coming boldly before your throne of grace, knowing, God, that you are able and that we do stand on the promises in your word. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. ushers make their way this morning please remember we will be having Sunday night service tonight so if you're able to join us please be here tonight at 6 30 for that we also have ladies bible study tomorrow uh, any questions please see sister Amanda but I know that they would love to have you let's pray over this offering thank you Jesus for this opportunity to give to your kingdom we pray that you would bless it multiply it help us to reach this world in Jesus' name, amen.
Will everybody say praise the Lord? Amen. I like that scripture when it says, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go to the house of the Lord. And how many knows that through this time you may have missed a few services and you were itching and you were ready to get back in the house of God. Praise God. And uh, we're, we're glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, I hope you all gained about five or ten pounds. See, I lost ten pounds during the COVID war, but I think I picked that all back up. <laughs> Praise God. Thanksgiving was Thursday, but we're still... I hope living in the realm of thanksgiving. Every day should be a day of thanks. And this morning, I'm going to direct your attention to the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, and uh, read a story here uh, in uh, Luke, the 17th chapter, about 10 lepers, ten men who were lepers. Beginning in verse 11, it says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Now notice this here. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Where are, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God? Except this, the translation, or translation says Samaritan in the King James, but it says foreigner. Everybody say foreigner. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole or well. Everybody say well. Praise God. How many believes the word of God today? Amen. Is able to make you well, to make you whole, to cleanse you. You believe that's a reality here today? Amen. In the midst of all this, we can still have the faith, amen, that God can use to make something happen in our life. That's important for us. Amen. So let's raise our hands and pray one more time and just ask God to open up our hearts to receive his word today. Lord God, we thank you once again for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness that you have so graciously shown to us. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Amen. And I'm praying that your word would have, amen, an impact in our lives today. For those that are here in the building, the physical building, and also those that are watching, amen, online today. I pray, God, that right where they are at, amen, that you will make an impression on them through your word. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, and everybody say amen. Praise God. One more time, put your hands together for him as you're being seated. One day, the preacher came over to the house unexpectedly. How, how many wants the preacher to come to your house unexpectedly? Huh? It wasn't uncommon for me to ride around with my dad years ago and he'd decide off the spur of the moment, let's just drop by and see so and so. Nowadays I'm a little bit more apprehensive than that because sometimes people, you know, we'll just leave that lay. So the preacher came over to visit unexpectedly to this house, 
Amen. And so the lady of the house wanted to make a good impression. Amen. She instructed her little daughter to run and get the book, the good book we love, we all love so much, and bring it here. And the daughter took off and, and then returned a minute or so later with a triumphant look on her face. And she presented to her the Sears catalog. You see, this story is quite the embodiment of our human nature, which is simply to ask, ask, ask. And in this case, as, the mo as most children, <clears throat> this little girl's choice of reading material was a book that I used to look at when I was a kid growing up. That was great to get the Sears robot catalog and go page by page and look at the toys. Didn't care about the other stuff like tractors or whatever else they had, rototillers. You were looking specifically for that area that had a, you were there. Why? Because you wanted things in that catalog and you were ready to ask, ask, ask. Amen. And so there she was. And there we are. Here we are. Amen. Making that wish list. <clears throat> and not making it from the book of spiritual and physical things. In which we need to make a focal point in each and every one of our lives. And so it is the word of God. We call it the Bible. Not the material possessions which will teach you and I, amen, what, how to respond to God and what he's looking for to receive from you and I. Amen. That response is simply what we read in this story many times. An uncommon thanks. I mean, how many times have you not said thank you? How many times have your children not said thank you and you will remind them They'll do so, you'll do something for them and they'll just walk away and you'll say, hey, how about a thank you? Now, yeah, you say it sarcastically, but really what you're trying to do is get in their head. You need to get used to saying thank you. Amen. It ought not be something rare. It ought to be something common. Come on, somebody say Hallelujah. Because uncommon, that's what it means. It's not common. It's unusual. It's rare. Now, pick up in the story what we read today. Jesus expresses a little bit of concern in verse 18. Amen. When he said, was, was no one found to return and give praise to God except this Samaritan, this foreigner? You see, there's difference between the Jews and the Samaritans. We talk about them from time to time. The Jews and the Samaritans, number one, they hated each other. Now, folks, let me tell you something today. There ain't nothing worth hating everybody over. All right? You know, you hear me say all the time, amen, that there's nothing in my life worth going to hell over. Right? Amen. Take care of things. Make them right. Amen. Because there is your, your eternal soul weighs in the balance when you talk about heaven and hell. So the Jews and the Samaritans, they hated each other. And so the Jews would go to great length to bypass Samaria on their journey. They would not go there. And even thought that they had common roots in their heritage. They preferred to feel as if they had nothing in common. Yes, we're kind of related. But no, we really don't have anything in common. You see, some things, some things brought these nine Jews and this one Samaritan together. Amen. What, what was it? In other words, when you look at the story, you find out it was their common affliction. Leprosy <clears throat> could be many, many different types of skin diseases, but leprosy was the most feared illness of that day and time. Amen. You, were, you became an outcast. You could not socialize with people. 
You had to stand a distance away. And, and in fact, verse 12 tells us that these 10 lepers were standing at a distance away. Amen. They had to cry out that they were unclean. They were not allowed to come near anybody. They had to keep a distance. Come on, people. Does that make sense today? A distance of six feet from other people, including their family members. They weren't accepted in the circles. Furthermore, lepers were not allowed to live within the walls of any city. They were outcast, completely avoided by everybody. When you look at Leviticus, the 13th chapter, verses 44, 45 and 46, it simply says, As for the leper who has the infection, his clothes shall be torn. The hair of his head shall be uncovered. And he shall cover his mustache and cry, Unclean! Unclean! He shall remain unclean all the days during which he has the infection. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be without the camp. Or without the camp shall his habitation be. They suffered together. In the agony of their affliction, they suffered together. Their common need brought them together. They needed mercy. Turn to your neighbor and say, we need mercy. So there they were. They cried out with a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity. Master, have mercy on us. See, their common faith. Everybody say common faith. Amen. They stayed together. They lived around each other. Their common problem brought them together, and now it was going to be their common faith that brought them to Jesus. Amen. They must have heard of the uh, authority, amen, and the healing power in the name of Jesus to bring them there. Amen. Their common cleansing, uh, verse 14 tells us, and as they went, they were cleansed. Jesus, have mercy on us. Go show yourself to the priest. And as they departed... They were cleansed. Even though these nine Jews and one Samaritan had many common experiences that had pulled them together across generations of prejudice and pride, something once again at the last separated them. Do you understand me? Before, amen, there was any kind of a problem with an illness. They were separated. They hated one another. But it was that illness that brought them together. And now they're back in a situation to where the nine take off and they are cleansed. But we got a problem. Something pulled these ten, ten member uh, 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 gang of lepers apart. What was it? Verse 18, Jesus proclaims, Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner, this Samaritan? Listen to me because we got something to say here in just a minute. You see, the word foreigner that Jesus used here is the same word that was inscribed on the wall of the temple to describe those who could not enter. So this gives us a little bit of insight into the faith of the Samaritan. Yes, things may have changed for the nine, but they could really go back to the priest, amen, and, and, and be pronounced cleansed. He was a foreigner. He was a Samaritan. He could not get that because it was inscribed. You're not allowed. Folks, the day we become a church where nobody, where we say, oh, only this person or that person uh, or these people or, or this nationality or, or this group of people can come to church, we've missed the boat because there should never be anything on our church, uh, nothing on our websites or any other social media that would make people feel like they would not be welcome uh, in this church. Uh, amen. This church is for to whomsoever will that wants to come, amen, and drink of the rivers of life freely. Never thought of it really this way, but but what must he have felt like? Yes, I, I've got it, but 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 now I'm separated from the ones that I've been with for so long because now I cannot go back and be pronounced cleansed because I'm a foreigner, I'm a Samaritan. One other place says they considered them dogs. They considered them half breeds. Think about that. 
So he took Jesus at his word and began a journey to see the priest. He left with everybody else, right? That's what you read, correct? He leaves. Amen. Everybody's going to go see the priest. They journey uh, that, 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 that all of a sudden it probably occurred to him, I can't finish this journey. They won't welcome me. He won't pronounce me cleansed. I'm not acceptable. I'm not. Think about it. The priest would never have seen, would never have seen this man. Oh, he's unclean. He's defiled. He's a Samaritan. He's a foreigner. No, I will not pronounce him cleansed. They would have considered him to be worthless than a stray dog. Think about that. So after after the healing, the nine Jews still had the priest to go to so they could be declared clean. Understand this part of it today. Amen. They had a place to go to to be declared clean. The nine Jews still had the law to fulfill so they could be considered good Jews. But the one Samaritan had, had not, no place to go. Now notice this. But back to Jesus. Right? Everybody say back to Jesus. Let me tell you what. Sometimes you're going to venture out from the things of God. Sometimes you're going to be playing out there in, 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 the, in the world somewhere. Amen. No, you may not be out there doing a lot of the other stuff that, 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 that they do. But, you know, you got cold in God. Amen. Somewhere you got to come to that place to where you say, really, the only place I need to get to right now is back to Jesus. All this stuff that's getting on me, all this unclean thing, all these sins, all this other stuff that's getting a, a hold of me right now. Amen. The only way, the world, I, I can't go that way. I've got to go back to Jesus. And so he realized Jesus was the source of his healing. He realized that Jesus was the one who had shown him the mercy that he did not and would not receive from the temple. And he also realized it was the mercy he did not deserve. You see, this foreigner had no desire to go back to false religion because that's what they were part of. The Samaritan religion lacked the power to heal him. They could do nothing for him. So even if he went to them, they could do nothing for him. Right? The Samaritan religion had failed to show him mercy because they kicked him out as well. He was a leper. You can't come here. You're unclean. So the Samaritan only wanted to go to one place, and that's the best place to go. Back to Jesus. Let me appeal to you today. Get back to Jesus. No matter what's going on in our world today, no matter what the chaos is, no matter what they tell you out there, amen, the best place to go is back to Jesus. Oh, let's clap our hands and praise him together right now. So we presume a lot of things, but the greatest cause to separate the Samaritan from the nine Jews was what? Was it the fact that he couldn't go to the temple and be cleansed? Was it the fact that he really wasn't going to be accepted among his own people? Amen. He realized going back to Jesus, what was, what was the thing that separated him from the other nine? It was that willing, that uncommon thanks. Everybody say uncommon thanks. Amen. It was this uncommon thankfulness. We just came through Thanksgiving. We sat at our house and we do it every year and everybody was there. Amen. I won't say how many because we're on the internet. But we had, fam it was all family. And so we're sitting there and, 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 and as we do every year, we start from the youngest and we go all the way up and we tell what we're thankful for. Sorry to say it's not the turkey on the stove. It wasn't the dressing. It wasn't the mac and cheese. Need I go on? I'm starting to drool. It wasn't the pies and the cakes. You know, it wasn't all that. No. It had its place. It had its time. But what was important right then was everybody saying, this is what I'm thankful for. Even the ones that are young enough, they speak, and they might just say something like, I'm thankful for my dog. They don't say, I'm thankful for mom and dad. I'm thankful for my brothers and sisters. I'm thankful for my dog. 
We laugh. But here's the thing, though. No, maybe they didn't really thank mom and dad and everybody else, but they did thank God for something, that dog that was precious to them. And they're learning what Thanksgiving is being, what it's all about. Amen. Uncommon thankfulness. Man, see, there were some powerful results of the Samaritan's uncommon greatness. Why? Because when he went back, he touched Jesus. The Bible says in verse 16 that he threw himself on Jesus' feet. Out of the ten who were healed, it was this Samaritan only who got to touch the master. This stranger, literally that word stranger means a, this, this man, this stranger of another race of people. This foreigner touched Jesus. And here he said Jesus made him well. Verse 19, then said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The King James, thy faith hath made thee whole. You know, some Bible scholars, when you read them, when they talk about that word well, so that word well is from the same word that, that, that is used in the New Testament to describe salvation. Amen. There are some striking similarities between this story and this, in the scripture and you and I as we sit here today. Our uncommon affliction was brought on us together. We all had it. It's called sin. Leprosy. Sin. You know, we look at sin and we say, well, you know, you're used to it, you're kind of out there, you're among your, your people and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you something right now. When you come in contact with the master, all of a sudden you realize, amen, how, how filthy sin is, amen, and unclean sin is, amen, and it's really not allowing you to, to, to fellowship with righteousness. Our uncommon affliction has brought us together. It's sin. It's an affliction that brought all of us together because we have all suffered from it. Amen. We've all sinned, fallen short of the glory. It is a disease that has contaminated, contaminated each of us and caused us to be outcast from the family of God. I was on the internet last night. Too late. But something caught my attention. From somebody that had put the inscription why I left the organization or why I left the UPCI. This is a young lady, and I thought, wow, why in the world would she say something like that? And so, of course, I clicked on it. I wanted to hear what she had to say. And as I began to listen to it and kind of take it all in, I thought to myself, this is, this is a wounded person. This is somebody that's been through things. This is somebody that felt like there's a time in her life that she became an outcast. Amen. And, and I got to thinking, oh man, that's, that's not good. That's not good. Amen. But let me tell you something here this morning. Nobody at this church should feel like an outcast. And if you or I make them feel that way, then we need to get back to Jesus. I'm not saying the church that she came from was doing anything wrong. I could just feel by the way she was talking that that's where she was headed because something happened in her and she began to question things and then she, the hurt began to happen and all that kind of stuff. Let me tell you something today. Sin is a disease. It will contaminate you and I. It will cause us to be an outcast from the things of God. It is a disease which is fatal to the soul. Nobody can cure it. Amen. Nobody. The only person that can cure the sin in your life, amen, is the great physician, and that's Jesus Christ. Come on. That's it. That's it. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. Everybody say all. We've all shared that affliction of sin. But there is one thing that will set us apart from most others. What would that be? It's, it's, that, it's that thankfulness. Thankfulness should not be uh, uncommon. 
Thankfulness needs to be something that will roll off of the tip of your tongue when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, amen, when you get to your work safely, when you get home safely, when you go to the store, when you stock your cupboards with your food, there needs to be a word of thanksgiving, not just on the 24th or whatever Thursday it is of November. But every day there needs to be something on our lips that rolls out something of gratitude and thankfulness unto the King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah today. Let's clap our hands and praise him again. He's worthy of it today. Hallelujah. You see, those who are sincerely thankful, if you're sincerely thankful, how many, how many knows what it's like to get in the spirit of prayer and you just feel like you're touching Jesus? Hallelujah. What an experience. What a joy when you get into that place and you feel like you're touching the heart of God. Amen. Those who express uncommon thankfulness to the master are the ones that experience the cleansing of sin. They get to experience the joy of being made well. Amen. And if anybody has a reason to be uncommonly thankful, folks, today, it's you and I. It is you and I. We're here only because of the grace and the mercy of God. We have what we have because we had an encounter with Him. But it's not just a one-time occasion. Thank God this has all changed. Thank God I don't have to have a priest, uh, amen, to take a sacrifice, uh, amen, for me. Or thank God I don't have to have him put the blood on the mercy seat, uh, amen. Thank God I can go into the holiest of holies. Thank God now I can enter into the presence of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. He has made me well. That's where we're at today. Amen. I want to be able to say thank you, Lord for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Oh, come on now. Amen. There's something about it. When you begin to, amen, when you begin to lift up, amen, your voice unto the Lord and you begin to thank him. I'm telling you, when you begin to do that, the presence of the Lord gets to moving. He inhabits, the Bible said he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. But I believe we got to get to the place to where we start with thanksgiving. Amen. We start with thanksgiving and begin to tell him what we're, that we're thankful for what he's done in our life. The pastor, I don't feel like it. Do it anyway. The pastor, I, you know, it's just a, it's a I, I just don't want to uh, do it if it's not, if it doesn't seem sincere, then do it till it does sound sincere. Come on. Amen. Those who express it, express their thankfulness to the master, amen, they're the ones that's going to get touched. Something different's going to happen to them. Hello? <laughs> I'm closing this down. Let me ask you a question. Have you, have you had the faith to call out to him for the cleansing of sin? You see, here's the problem with, with a, lot, a lot of people in the church world today. They, they, they want that easy way. You know, there's nothing more difficult than, uh, you, uh, let me just tell you a little story here. Can I tell you a little story? It's a cute story while they get kind of situated here. The other day I'm standing in the kitchen. Did I tell this story? I don't know if I did. But I'll tell it again for those who may not have been here. I was standing in the kitchen. My wife's in the living room. And she just says out loud, she says, Boy, I sure hope Gerald and Justin don't uh, get another dog. And I'm sitting in the kitchen, you know, and I, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm like, oh, Lord, here we go. She's going to ask me. So finally, finally she says, from the living room, she says, she stops and she says, did they get another dog? It was not a question with me whether I was going to tell the truth or tell a lie. <laughs> that little dog ain't worth going to hell over. So I told the truth. I said, yeah. There she goes. So later on, 
my daughter's smiling at me and she says, did you tell mom that we had that other dog? And I said, I did. But I'll tell you what, I wasn't going to lie when she asked me point blank, do they have another dog? You see, sometimes we can look at some things and think, oh, you know, that's not really important. You could have told a little white one there, Pastor. Not and still get up here. You understand what I'm saying? You can tell those little ones and you don't feel bad about it. You need to feel awful about it. Somebody calls and you say, or have somebody say, well, he, there, she or he is not available right now when you're standing right there. You need to stop that. Serious. You need to adopt that phrase. There's nothing worth going to hell over. And so I'm going to be honest, even if it hurts me. I'm going to be truthful. Let me tell you why. Only Jesus can rectify the problem in your life. Only He can help you along the way. But you've got to be thankful for it. Amen. Call out to Jesus. He's the only one that can cleanse you from sin. Amen. You will still be alienated if you don't get to Jesus. He's the only one that can give you a living hope. You have a hopeless life in this world alone. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Hallelujah. And for us today that have experienced this cleansing power of Jesus Christ, let me ask you, how many times do you go back and fall at the feet of the Master and say thank you? Thank you. Right? Oh, but I've, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you know. I'll be back Sunday. We'll thank Him then. No. What about Monday? What about Tuesday and Wednesday? What about Thursday and Friday? What about Saturday? Or for us that are watching online, you know, doesn't matter if you're here or there. You, this relationship must be maintained. Amen? It must be. And so, no matter what's going on in my life, I still need to find my way back to the feet of the Master and fall down and properly tell Him, Thank you. Thank you. It's that important, folks. Have you experienced it? Do you go back? Have we failed in this area? In this Thanksgiving season right now, amen, is that the only time we think about being thankful, being, being a, at that place to where we say, thank you, Jesus, when we're sitting around the turkey table? Is that it? Can we make it a habit? Let's stand together. It's Thanksgiving season, and we're going into Christmas. But right now, today, I'm spending some time on Thanksgiving. Now's the time to begin living with that thankfulness, that uncommon, that rare. I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to have a heart that is full of thanksgiving to my King of Kings and my Lord of Lords because He's worthy of my thanksgiving. Amen. We're going to sing something right now. And I'm going to open these altars would love to come, maybe just spend this time here at home or right here in a pew and just this moment on this Sunday morning let's let our heart be turned toward the Lord and just say thank you Jesus I want to thank you Lord, can we do that right now? Amen Thank, thank
raise your hands together right now. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for this moment, this day, this time that we have. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to approach you.